Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for spending uh, a couple of moments uh, with us. Kindly like, share, subscribe, uh, come aboard, right? Come aboard. Uh, we usually broadcast uh, Monday uh, through Wednesday. I have a normal Thursday night off because, again, speaking all day and trading all day and all that, all the things I do all day, again, kind of gets a little uh, too much. So I can take Thursday nights off to kind of refresh for Friday, and then we there's another broadcast on Sunday. So thank you very much for spending a couple of minutes of your day. So let's talk about it, right? Going into uh, going into today, we talked about uh, yesterday was an inside day for the market. Uh, NASDAQ didn't take out the previous day's high, didn't take out the previous day's low. And when you looked at yesterday's price action, it really reflected uh, going into the trading day. And the question was, can we get out of this channel today, right? That was the only question we were talking about. We know, again, uh, the numbers are still the same. Uh, we talked about 371 to the upside. We talked about 364 to the downside. And as you can see today, the NASDAQ defended that 364 level because when you woke up this morning, uh, you saw all the chip stocks getting hit this morning. Uh, AMD, uh, NVIDIA, ARM, Marvel, right? They all got crushed because Biden announced that they are preparing to halt shipments for AI chips into China. Obviously, not a good thing uh, if you are a chip maker. And when you take a look at what these stocks did, uh, especially pre-market, you kind of get the idea of what happened here with the NASDAQ 100. Here's the good news, right? The NASDAQ 100, for the most part, is comprised of semiconductor names, software names, and biotech names, right? And when you woke up this morning, everything was getting hit. You know, uh, NVIDIA at one point uh, was down like 27, 28 points. Everything looked doom and gloom and like, well, like, here we go, right? This is what's going to get us out of the channel. But to the bull's credit, okay, and this is where technical analysis comes into play, the bull's credit, as you can see, it held Friday's low and started to bounce. That's very, very bullish. And the reason why you have to kind of look at that, deem that as, as a bullish thing, keep this in mind. We had this really big run off the bottom, reclaimed the 50-day moving average, lost the 50-day moving average on that hot jobs number and all that data, CPI, PPI, all that great stuff. Uh, last week, they defended the 10-day moving average, reclaimed back the 50-day moving average, tried to lose back the 50-day moving average again, held it and closed above now for the second day, right? Second day in a row, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six out of the last, uh, five out of the last six days above the 50-day moving average. That's a good thing. The fact that they, um, buyers came in for the most part, okay? There was a lot of casualties today, especially in the semiconductor space, but for the most part, the fact that buyers came in and started bidding up these shares at one point getting the NASDAQ 100 green was a good thing, right? If you look at the final tally today, it really doesn't, it, the scoreboard really doesn't make uh, a lot of um, a, a lot of headway. You had the NASDAQ, the S&P fractionally lower, and you had the Dow fractionally higher, so there was nothing accomplished. Now, the question is, what happens tomorrow? Before what happens tomorrow, well, we have to see what drove the market today. Obviously, the scoreboard was not uh, indicative. Uh, you had retail sales come in this morning and they came in hot, just like the jobs number came in hot, just like all the other data that's coming in hot. And ironically, what actually moved today were the retail stocks. Now, before you get excited, the two worst groups, arguably, uh, in the last, you could make a case over the last year, was the Russell, right? The IWM with the small and mid cap stocks. Again, there's not really an interpretation of having a discussion here. You could just look at the chart absolutely dismal. But again, the IWM led at least all the benchmarks higher today. Okay, cool. And then you have retail. With all the retail hot sales today, you had Dollar Tree, right? You had Dollar Tree having a big day. You had Kohl's, you know, having a really, really big day. 
You had raw stores that we talked about last night in the video. You guys remember last night in the video? Got above the 50-day moving average, right? Raw stores went higher. You had Kohl's go high. And again, you could go through all these uh, all these symbols. Uh, you could see all these retail stocks. And Etsy, let me just give you one more. Uh, Etsy, which I still like uh, going into tomorrow. But you, you can see the movers today and the shakers today and the strength, right? And the strength, the stocks that have relative strength. These, this is like, you know, this is like winning... And I say this in the nicest way possible. This is like winning the shortest, you know, the shortest dwarf competition, right? The two worst groups on the planet had good days. As uh, you know, Lefty Nigerio and Donnie Brasco once said, even a dog gets a warm piece of the sidewalk, right? These are the dogs that got the warm piece of the sidewalk. Does that mean anything for us going into tomorrow? Eh, probably not. But again, tomorrow is going to be a big day. And the reason why tomorrow is a big day, tomorrow is the kickoff, for at least for me, after the, uh, the official start to mega cap piles. technology earnings. The banks came in. They were okay, right? They were okay, if that's your thing. But for me, it starts with the mega cap technology sector. Uh, obviously, we we'll go over the quarter here. You have the land research, right? You have land research that actually had a great reversal today. If you think about all the chip stocks, it actually had a really good reversal uh, going ahead of its earnings. Netflix, right? Netflix, we, we, we've been seeing now uh, for the last several weeks, uh, made more announcements of raising uh, raising the subscription fees, which obviously is a bullish thing. But if you've been following this channel, you know how many pivots, right? You guys remember how many pivots we've had on, tes on Netflix on the way down? So we'll see, right? Again, there's not a lot of optimism these days on any time Netflix has a quarter, okay? We'll see what happens there. Can they... You know, can they really beat a really low bar tomorrow? We'll see. Again, I have no idea. The biggest name for me in my interest is Tesla, right? So we've been talking about Tesla. Tesla been a couple of times trying to crack the 50-day, and they've been defending it, and then they try to crack it again, and then they're defending it again. And the one common denominator, again, this has nothing to do with my opinion of what I think the stock is going to do tomorrow on earnings, because again, I have no idea, just like nobody else has any idea. But the one thing we continue to highlight, and we talked about last night's video, and we talked about probably in the last couple of weeks, is this really aggressive buying. They keep on buying, you know, the, the, they keep on making bullish bets into earnings. Yesterday, we talked about that one buyer that came in for $2.6 million for the 265 weeklies. Look at the buyers that came in today, right? Next, you know, you got next week's 275s. This guy bet in November 600 grand for the 290s. This guy bet 172 grand for the 310s. This guy bet another, I'm guessing it's the same guy, right? Yeah, you can see it's split up here. You know, you have two guys basically, right? The same, same guy going in for nearly what? 300 grand, 300 and change, right? For the 310 calls. Let me scroll down a little bit more, see what we got here. Here, another 600 grand for the November 290s. This guy came in for next week's 277.50s. Not a lot of put by. Again, does it mean somebody knows something? Does it mean, you know, somebody has the inside dope of what's going to happen? Guys, let me let you know a little secret. You could have the earnings report right in front of you, okay? Literally right in front of you. And you still don't know how the options market, how the equity market, how the price action is going to dictate after its release. We don't know, but James on the Slicker, surface, SGM, they Green, are Canada, hammering the, the institutional money flow in into, tomorrow's, uh, into tomorrow's earnings. Uh, they do come out with tomorrow's uh, number foods. after the close. So next Sergio time around, when you see Tango, tomorrow night's Chelsea. video, we will discuss the numbers and we will discuss uh, which way the price okay, action is going to go. For me, you know, I have no stake in this game right now. I'm just looking for potential trades. Uh, we tried to short like today. Tesla below the 50 hands, day. Focus on it only went down a dollar, and then it reclaimed back. Then we got long Tesla. We actually made some money on the long side. We'll get to the in a second. Um, so again, it's one of those scenarios that it's kind of the market is in a little bit of a stalemate, a little bit of a wait and see scenario. But tomorrow, hopefully, between Netflix, Lamb Research, and Tesla, we'll have more clues uh, going into Thursday session. So again, here are the key figures that we have to watch for tomorrow. QQQs, tell me if you heard this before. 371 to the upside, right? Because anybody guess what's to the downside? It's the same number as yesterday, the same number as the day before. This 364 level, right? As you can see here, today it got, uh, it defended the 364 lows that it put in on Friday, and we are still trapped into this little channel. After the close, I have not checked the news yet. You know what? Let's check the news together. Let's check the news together. Microsoft is up here, right? 
Microsoft is up after the close. Let me just see what's going on here. Uh, yeah, Microsoft report, reportedly to bring on Amazon as 365 Cloud Tools customer and a $1 billion deal. All right, that's cool. That's cool. Maybe maybe Microsoft uh, gets the market going. He's, because you can see Microsoft today, uh, after the close, it's up a couple of bucks. Uh, Meta is also moving up as well. I actually like Meta uh, going into tomorrow. If it could get above Friday's channel, that will be cool as well. But again, until now, until tomorrow, we'll see. We are in a little bit of a holding pattern. So we'll see. Hopefully, maybe the Qs can bust out of the channel with this Amazon, with this uh, Microsoft news. Uh, Meta looks like it's pretty strong after the close as well. So hopefully, we could get a little bit more clarity uh, going into tomorrow and ahead of uh, Tesla, Netflix, and Lamb Research earnings. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about today's pivots again. The, the coolest thing about trading and you're trading for a long time, like I said in last night's video, right? When the when you have a game plan and it gets blown up, because you've traded you've traded such a long time, you're going to be faced in a situation that you know what at some point you're going to be fine on both sides of the market. It might be not the greatest day in the world, but you'll do what you have to do to make things work. So for example, right? I'm always trading on both sides of the market. I'm always interested in both sides of the market. And you'll see the pivots here reflected. So here was a two-sided pivot we were talked about today on Tesla, uh, 256 upside, 248 downside. So initially I shorted the 248, uh, the 248 confirming down the 50-day moving average. And I have to admit, it only went down a buck. We took some money off. The rest we used break even. There was just a massive buyer sitting there. We're just sitting there, sitting there, and sitting there. And once the stock started reclaiming back that 3248 level, we were gone, right? A, a little bit of cash flow. Um, you know, we wanted to get that 244 breakdown into the hundred and into the hundred day EMA. We never got it. We only went down a dollar. So we took some cash flow. We realized there's a buyer in the crowd, use break even as a stop, move on with our day. AMD, right? AMD again was caught, got caught up in the spin cycle of um, the, the Biden chip ban going into China. 104, if it builds below, can flush. AMD had a nice little flush. So here is the 104 area. Uh, here is the 104 area. It took out this whole channel here and went all the way down to 101.60s. Really nice move on uh, 101. Um, really nice move there. Uh, Google never got down to 36.61. Raw stores, remember we talked about in last night's video? All you got to do is go to the last night's video. Uh, 116.80, 117 needs to build. Here is a raw stores. Again, not a sexy symbol, not exciting, not on anybody's uh, radar. But again, you know, a chart is a chart is a chart. It got above the 50-day moving average yesterday, confirmed today, went all the way up to 1850s. It still looks good uh, if the retailers have one more day up. Uh, KTOS stopped exactly uh, at the 1770s, 1780s level. I still like this thing for tomorrow. Q's held the bottom of the range. On uh, the video, right? So here is a rebound in the video. It, it gapped down like 22 points. Before it gapped down, we actually caught this thing on an opening range low short from the 338 level. I covered into the 335s into into the upper uh, rising support into the uh, into um, uh, into the 60 minute. The problem was it went down another eleven dollars. It is what it is, right? But you know, so we had an initial short and then we had an upside channel here. Uh, 440 needs to build. It actually started building about 443, uh, and it went to like 447, almost 448. Nice move there. Congratulations, you guys who caught Nvidia. And we you know, look, we tried Tesla. You no, know, we tried Tesla short, right? It only worked for like a dollar. So then we got long when it started breaking above the pre, you know, the previous channel high. Went green. Uh, 254.30 supply should get initially if it builds below, if it builds above, it can stretch. And Tesla made it all the way up to the five-day moving average of 257 and change. Again, not huge moves, but again, how can you get huge moves if the queues are stuck in a channel? That's the most important part uh, going into tomorrow's session. So let me give you guys, uh, let me give you guys a couple of names that I am watching uh, for tomorrow. Obviously, I probably will be playing Tesla after the close. I just want to see the reaction. Let me give you guys a couple of na names associated with retail. Uh, look at Etsy. Uh, Etsy looks good. Uh, Etsy looks really, really good. Uh, you can see your first close today above the 50-day. It got rejected in the 50-day EMA. Watch Etsy for tomorrow. If it can start building, if retail could have another day higher, 
and Etsy starts building above the 50-day EMA, maybe get a second-day move. Uh, Affirm, which is basically buy now, pay later, it is obviously having a pretty good reaction with the retail uh, with the retail trade today. Keep an eye on this thing. If this thing starts b- building above today's channel, uh, maybe it goes back to uh, the October 11th highs and breaks out there. That looks pretty interesting. Uh, look at PLTR, right? PLTR, uh, again, had a really, really big move flagging here. If it could just get above this channel here, maybe it starts testing our recent highs as well. On the beta front, uh, you know, Meta looks really, really good. Uh, let's keep an eye on this thing above Friday's channel and Microsoft. Let's see how Microsoft reacts on this Amazon news. Uh, apparently, it's getting a little bit of a stick up here after the close. And let's see if we can start challenging uh, Friday's high as well. So that's it. That's it, guys. Uh, hopefully, everybody's doing well. Hopefully, everybody's happy, healthy, and continued success and blessings uh, in your journey. Next time we speak, it will be after Tesla's earnings tomorrow. We'll see the way it goes. Again, Here's on the surface, CCC institutional money flow is, is betting that it is Gaza going Hospital to have a higher, a uh, higher move. What I'm saying is I have no idea, Israeli just like everybody else. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody. And I will see you all tomorrow. Israel Take care.